you know, I'm seeing some articles, by the way, you, you guys, I'm seeing some articles that you know things seem to be slowing down uh, uh, velocity wise. I don't know if prices have been affected, but things seem to be slowing down on the mainland. Uh, the, inc the increase in interest rates and the economy, et cetera, seems to be having an effect. Anyway, Dylan, the Big Island update, please, sir. <laughs> Oh, it, it does feel like it. The, the data hasn't caught up yet, I think, with what's going on in the market. But I think the the buyer um, psyche is definitely having an effect. And there's an interesting dynamic in the real estate market, right, where, where usually sellers are six months behind buyers in terms of when the mark, their, their mindset shifts with the market. And it seems like buyers are getting a little bit more cautious, pulling back a little bit. Sellers are still being aggressive on price. And I think we're entering a point where you're going to have a lot more disagreement in terms of you know what the price should be and what the term should be and it's going to take a little while for sellers to catch up and understand that buyers are not willing to pay 10 percent over list price and waive absolutely everything anymore because that's already kind of shifting so we'll see from a listing standpoint we're about to pop up above 1600 active listings for the first time in like six months so uh, it looks like inventory is on the rise. I mean, it's still 50% normal uh, times in terms of the number of properties that are on the market at any given time on the Big Island. But um, we're seeing that upward trend start. Properties sit on the market a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, we're in a. I think we're in a transitionary period right now. I don't think there's a crash coming necessarily, but definitely an evening out of the rapid, I think, appreciation that we've been seeing the last six, 12 months. You had mentioned, I saw some of your videos over the past few weeks where you had kind of a touched on a, a crash nut and so, and I would advise folks to take a look at your, your channel to get some more information on that. Um, Did yeah, we talk about that the, the, the other week, that, 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 that one stat about short-term resales? Why don't you go ahead and, and jump into that while, while you're here? If, if we this is a good, yeah, the, this is a good perspective for anybody who's just interested in the market or, you know, interested in, in the data that drives this stuff. So, so the people who keep predicting there's like a, you know, market crash coming an interesting indicator of data from the previous market crash was there was a ton of short-term resales. So normally there was about 80,000, and this is across the whole country, right? 80,000 per year, you would have people that would resell their house within a 12 month period. That in the lead up, you know, 04 to 06 went up to 400 or yeah 400,000. So I mean it went up five times, right? People were speculating hard on the real estate market and money was easy. So you could speculate and buy several houses with easy money and then resell it 6 months later for a $50,000 profit because the market was appreciating so quickly. So and that left a lot of people over leveraged, you know, the market super inflated. That really drove the bubble in 2006-2007 and this now we're back down to, you know, around a hundred, 120,000. So it's not like down to like 80,000, still higher than it was kind of previous, but it's nowhere near where it was in um, that lead up to the bubble the last time. So just an interesting, um, you know, difference in the, in the underlying data that doesn't really get reported very often. So there, you don't have those short-term speculators there are people still, you know, buying foreclosures and flipping them and stuff, but the people who are just buying, selling the exact same house six months later for a profit, it's, and, you know, Scott, and I, you know, I ask a lot of my people in, in across the country, I mean, how many of these short-term speculators are you selling houses to? And nobody's doing that. <laughs> I haven't sold the house to somebody doing that um, in it the is last be 10 years. It, so. it is going to be interesting to kind of see uh, how this is going to, you know, I mean, there's a, you know, people are saying, you know, is there a bubble? I, clearly to me, it, it's not going to be a bubble like the 2008 bubble, right? But, but bubbles almost by definition, don't repeat previous bubbles. They're different kinds of bubbles, right? So we don't know what the if there is going to be a bubble. Scott, your turn. What's going on on Oahu? Give us some news. Give us some updates. What do you want to comment on? Uh, yeah, to piggyback off of Dylan's comments about the previous market in 2006, I'll never forget this conversation I had with um We actually ended up being good friends, and I ended up having to bail him out and help him on the sales side. But he told me, he said, I did it. He goes, yeah, I just bought this condo. No money down, negative AM loan, negative amortizing loan, meaning what it means is you have your principal and interest payment and you can make the interest payment and not the principal portion and the principal goes back into the loan so the loan keeps getting bigger. These are typically types of loans that you would see with developers, short-term uh, debt that you you know get in, you want the low carrying costs and then get out. And he said, yeah, man, I'm gonna hold it for a couple years and I'm gonna sell it for a big profit. I said, man, you're, your risk load on that is pretty hefty, and sure enough, the market turned on him. 
and he ended up having to walk away from these units. We, we didn't see any of that in this market. There's not a single person I worked with over the last two years that didn't have a significant down payment, appraisal clause, removal, or cash. Um, pe people had money in this market, and there was a lot of capital uh, to go around, and in interest rates were really low. But we should expect deceleration. That's what I call it. I, I, I don't like the term slowdown because whenever I, if I say slowdown, people go, oh, market crash. That's not where we're headed. You know, as interest rates go up, that's a cost factor that is increased. You know, if you buy tomorrow and the interest rate goes up more than it is today, that home's going to cost you more in a monthly payment. So you can't have appreciation and interest rates both going up and it not affect that price appreciation component. So we are going to have deceleration. I'm starting to see it a little bit. In fact, for the active number of active homes on the market right now we're at 508 we were at 425 last time i did the show so yay we're starting to get a little in more inventory but in perspective in a normal market we're at 1600 to 2000 homes so by no means are we anywhere near where buyers are going to be like yeah i got a competitive advantage no sellers have all the advantage still and they're going to and and i i don't my gut tells me six months of inventory is a balanced market we're at like 1.4 right now. I don't think we're gonna get to six, which means, yes, we decelerate. People aren't gonna pay 150 to 300,000 over asking, which is some of what I was putting together during this time, but you are not going to be in the driver's seat for negotiations, at least not for the time being. And the one component that would uh, you know, significantly affect any price appreciation, I, I do expect double digit price appreciation this year over 10% price appreciation. Um, I don't, the, the only thing that affects that is if interest rates go nuts for some reason that it has to eat into the, what has to give, the price portion has to give, right? But we are an inflationary period. That means the cost that everything is going up. Why would you think your house is going to be cheaper tomorrow than it is today? It's not. That payment, if you're getting a mortgage, is gonna be more expensive tomorrow. I don't care how, how you slice it or dice it. And so you have to have that kind of mindset and understanding. People, people focus on price a lot, but you buy on a mo monthly mortgage payment. So let's look at the whole perspective and where are we going? And we're gonna be more, you know, if you're an investor, uh, your cash flows are gonna get infect affected here because two, two things, and you touched on it with the rents, uh, price appreciation up 20%, right? But rents only up 13. That's because rents follow after price which also means if you're an investor and you're buying, your cash flow position is gonna look bad when you're analyzing it, but guess what? The rents next month or the following month after that will be more, and what is that performance gonna do over the long run? Those are where you gotta make your projections. So the market is shifting. 508 single family homes on the market. I'm, you know, I'd love to see us get over 1,000 at minimum for, for a little while here to just to give more normalcy. I don't, it's not a healthy market to be in that little bit of inventory and, and buyers having to do that. So, but I will say, and I said it last month, condos are where it's at. We lost more inventory on the condo side. We're at like 850, right? So we have less condos on the market now because where are people shifting to? The more affordable price point. Interesting. So basically what I'm hearing from, from you guys is right now it's like uh, I, I forgot the, the good word that you used, Scott. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't call it markets. What De did you call deceleration. it? Deceleration. A deceleration. I was going to call it a slowdown, but deceleration sounds better than slowing down. But that, they, both, they both mean the same. Uh, regardless, um, slowing down, but no no, no kind of a, a, a crash, kind of a, a signal where we're going to have a, a, a severe drop. And that's an interesting observation, too. The interest rate, I mean, the we're in an inflationary period. So you know, that inflation is, it's, you, you kind of, it's kind of hard to kind of bump that against lowering uh, prices going down. So that's,